So uh, collaboration with Dynamic Karate Incorporated, Port Elizabeth, and Miguel Harker. And the discussion we are playing with is the commonality of ideas that go from the Kata Sevenshin, this movement, and the Kata, I think, Sorsha, it's either done this way or this way. Uh, forgive me if I don't know exactly how. My school, Sente Miguel, is going to fill us in on how it's done. In Seyunjin Kata, we move twice, crossing over, and then we come around, sweep, and have some kind of working. So, a little bit more of an applied karate feat. Okay. Obviously, we are comparing uh, Seyunjin and Soshin. So, what we're focusing on is on a cut. There could have been a this and a defense already, that's not the issue. The, the issue is, is what is this technique used for? And we are using it to get inside and break in this control. So immediately we're going to break this control, we're going to try and catch somewhere else or hold on to this. And as I'm doing that, he will say, take the two. So I immediately get to start crossing out to something because I'm not in control anymore, and we'll get taken down. So normally, Wung Kai would be just punching drawdown, blocking, catching, strike. The arms crossing are really, really important because that gives us these kind of positions. And these are really useful for bringing our opponent down onto the ground. Okay, so I'm unsettling him as he takes now possibly a more cyclical swing and a hook and something else. I can bring him in. And because that's meant hopefully bring him off balance, and I do this. I can bring a head in here, here, and now we have a new place to be on the floor. And from here, that hurricane, one hand covering, other side hurricane. Okay. So, this is a couple of ideas from our Hotori Karate Center on this movement, a little bit more applied. In the sense that if you were standing and he had to take a hook, one, two, second hook comes, and he's on the ground. Okay. So this is our creative process. He's got a shower thought, <laughs> for real. Mine is like, a, I normally when I'm driving, I'm daydreaming, it's not dangerous. So uh, this is how we wing stuff. So, so uh, doing the sorcian, I'm just looking at that, and that, and other, the other exterior. So no matter how I'm starting, I'm going to want to be here, number one, because I've got as high as I can, actually, here, this one nice and grab. And my twist, one is up, other one, down. So nice and slow, nice and close. I hope we still in the screen. Doesn't matter where we're starting. This one deep, this one low, this one is going down, this one going up. Same twisting action. The idea behind the cutter is that the cutter will give us an indication as to what is happening in combat. We will vary it ever so slightly. It will never look exactly the same as the cutter because my opponent will vary in size, will uh, attack, will vary in intensity, and we will go from there. I'm just going to touch off on some points that we would look at, um, and some of them will occur in our first variant so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so here are some more applied kind of ideas, some of them a little bit more fundamental and basic based on breaking down the, the technique and some of them based more on um, how you get to the sequence that I showed um, in the first collab video. Hi, Brian. Um, please excuse the masks, but unfortunately we have to be a little bit safe. Hey, Shimas. So the first thing is, like, I'll get you okay, and she done okay, and get on bra. Um, these techniques can have um, more than one application and that because they are a receiving technique, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are just pure blocks. So 
um, Brian, please, left, uh, right back. If he is attacking and I'm intercepting, I'll intercept on this part of his hand first with the first part, second part here, so I can draw him in and immediately. So sometimes you see this hand is like this. It's because there's actually a strike happening here. If the arm is up, his elbow can be used to press against my body, push back Brian, and to change the nature of the attack, especially if it ends up in my throat. So you will see some schools like to drop this arm, and it helps trap. Now, this head, kind of not working so good. All right, but this immediate response. So one, two, can also be one, two. Okay, so one, two, three. The stepping, the pulling that we use might be with the idea that I've now created the best possible option for him. He's going to take a swing, a shot, and I can immediately redirect. And now attacking into the groin. If I feel strong enough, or if I collapse under the bad stepping, maybe we are working towards going to ground. The judo principle of the execution of the throw as a means to end the fight is pretty important. From a psychological point of view, if somebody is standing and they feel they have assertion and dominance, and the next minute, they're feeling their head hitting the floor. It creates a fair amount of disorientation. Is it a good idea to work towards that on every single karate technique? I don't know. But watching a lot of MMA and seeing how often fights end up in groundwork positions makes a lot of sense that you are comfortable in getting there. Getting the person down using the shoulder wheel, the katagurama out of judo to help bring the person down is a good interpretation of this technique. So that's my second variant for the collab, is that there is this blocking and striking, the idea of pulling, hitting, striking. All right? The other ideas will be about inverting the technique. So pulling the leg one way and elbow striking in the opposite direction. Let me show you what that looks like. If he is kicking my Gary, maybe I'm moving and striking. This hand is helping to pull his leg. This hand is helping to pull him down. Obviously, the most natural thing here is to take him down and to move to a point where you're on top. So you can carry on fighting. Arigato, gozaimasu. So, short little insert, a little bit of extension. I get so excited doing these videos. I hope you do. Thank you very much to um, our partners in the collaboration. I hope that everybody enjoys what we've come up with. Arigato, gozaimasu. Thank you to the UK, Brian. Arigato, gozaimasu. Thank you. Sayonara. We, we always talk about biomechanics and, and, and how the body functions, knees bend one way, um, and so forth and so forth. So we try to find similarities always. However, before we find similarities, it's sort of the feeling of, of, of how things go. So we will make come here, and, and, and the simplicity of the techniques are always this type of action. So we will always develop anything you do, and you're going to discover. Everything from Kaki. Jagas and Zoe uh, from myself. Um, thanks for letting us be a part of this collab. Um, we've been friends a long time. Uh, Dwayne Sensei is 
had many, many, many good trainings at your dojo too, from his very first coffee training, <laughs> which he still talks about today. Um, yeah, so it's an honor for us to be a part of this. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks to uh, Sensei Dwayne. He actually had no idea what he was doing, he just came here. <laughs>